Oh, such compression. Woo! All right. If you've got a bike that doesn't start, um, and you've got no spark on it, there are a couple of different issues which you could have. Uh, obviously, spark plugs, they're probably the most common. They get fouled. Uh, you remove them, clean them up, put them back in, try again. If that doesn't work, replace them. I have a spark plug video up, so we're not going to be really talking about that today. Today we're going to be talking about uh, ignition coils and CDI boxes. Now this is basically how everything works. Um, a little bit of current comes up from your uh, stator and your pickup coil down there. Comes over to your CDI box. Your CDI box uh, determines when it's going to send the spark. The spark goes around here to the coil, which typically lives right up underneath here. And then that runs through the spark plug wire and uh, to the spark plug and um, into your engine and it makes a spark. Here we have an ignition coil and a CDI box. CDI boxes are really cool. They um, replace points contacts um, and they're a lot better in my opinion because um, they don't typically require any maintenance. Uh, you don't have to clean up you know, points or replace them or anything. Um, they deliver a much more precise spark, although I've been told that it's um, a shorter spark and so it needs to be more precise to, uh, to, to fire the engine. But um, they work really, really well until they don't. And then when they don't, there's not much you can do about it except to replace it. Um, there are a couple of threads on forums around there about how to make your own CDI box, especially for guys like me who have an XT550 whose um, CDI boxes are notoriously poor. They fail more often than other CDI boxes. Um, and then they're really expensive because they only made this bike for two years. So um, you can make your own, you can get like, you know, refurbished ones. I've never experimented with any of that because what I have planned for this bike, I want to take it on some adventure traveling and so I want to have a factory made CDI box. So shoot me. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, uh, here we got the CDI box and the coil. Um, since we're already talking about the CDI box, um, Really, the best way to diagnose your CDI box is either to rule out everything else or to just replace it. Um, it's kind of expensive to replace it. I hunted for weeks to find one for $85, and I'm really lucky for it. Um, but um, if you happen to have another one from a donor bike, maybe your friend's got the same bike, you know, just swap it in and see if your bike will fire. Um, I don't know of any way that you can, like, check ohm resistance or whatever through here. I'm not sure that it can be done. Um, and that's just because of the, the circuitry in here is uh, not really meant for, uh, for maintenance by, you know, the lay person. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, you can swap one in or you can basically rule everything out. Like I said, you know, check your, your fuse. If your fuse is bad, uh, not your fuse, your, um, your spark plug. If your spark plug is, um, is bad, you know, replace it. See if that works. Check your spark plug wires, you know, check your coil. Um, that there's power going into the CDI box from the, uh, the stator and the pickup coil. Um, you can check for continuity through the pickup coil. Um, and if all those things test out, then it's probably the CDI box. That's why I wait till I've diagnosed pretty much everything else in the electric system before, um, before replacing this. Oh, obviously, you know, check your, your ignition switch, you know, check your, uh, your kill switch and stuff like that. So, that's how you test that. For your coil, test that. What you're going to need is your multimeter here. And there's two different places to test it. I'm going to set this camera up. There you go. All right. So first, you're going to be looking little wires. So there's that. And check for continuity between these two. You want somewhere, for most bikes, it's somewhere between like 0.5 and 3. This one's all the way up at 4, so it's probably bad. See that? It's just an old junky one, so it's probably, you know, on its way out. But for shits, we're going to check the other one. 
um, the other measurement. So we're going to put our negative on the negative here, if you can see down at the bottom of the screen, right there. And whoops, now we're going to be checking for like tens of thousands of ohms. So you see there how I can just get it to like flicker 19,000 ohms, 15,000 ohms, 8,000 ohms, 9,000 ohms, stuff like that. Um, you need to have a certain range in there too, and both of these ranges can be found in your repair manual. Some bikes, you know, they might necessarily, they might be okay with a little bit more resistance, you know, than four. Um, all these, all these values can be found in your repair manual. So, um, if you find that your coil is outside of these values, even if, you know, it might be putting out a weak spark, you know, change it anyway. Strong spark is a million times better than a weak spark. So, that's how we, uh, that's how we test that. Alright, so that didn't really tell very much information about how this thing works, you know. If anyone's wondering, how does a CDI box work? Well, a really, uh, really old and wise motorcycle mechanic once told me uh, how these things work, and it's actually really interesting. You see, this black box here, you know, the computer or the brain of the motorcycle, you know, it looks like it wants to be filled with all the circuitry, but actually, there's nothing in there but smoke. It's completely hollow except for it's filled with smoke. And this thing runs on electrical smoke. So, if you ever run your bike and you see a little escape of smoke, or you see smoke escaping from your wires, your wires run on smoke too. So if you see smoke coming out of here, then all your smoke is escaping, you know? And this thing obviously won't run without its smoke. So, it needs to have its smoke inside. All right, all right, terrible joke, terrible joke. Um, truth is that I'm not entirely sure how it works. Uh, so one way that we can figure out how something works, or at least attempt to, is by opening it up. Um, and to open this thing up, um, you use a very delicate process. You use a specialty tool. Um, I went down to the store and picked up one of these. It's called a Haymare. Haymare? Am I pronouncing that right? You just... Um, Use this to just sort of open it up. Well, now there's your problem. Now, see, it's this great big circuit board thing here, and it does all manner of things. Um, you know, I, uh, I have the information written down somewhere that somebody sent me on how these things work exactly, and I never really cared to learn it, um, just because, you know, it doesn't really matter anyway. It's not like I'm going to try and build one of these. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's what the inside of your CDI box looks like. Very educational. Alright, so I replaced the CDI box and the coil. Um, now we're going to see if that did the trick. Ugh, son of a bitch. Obviously we still have a little bit of work to go. Um, I got some missing parts coming to me in the mail um, and we're still running super lean because half the airbox is missing. But, badass little bike. We're going to be good friends. 